Hello, welcome to the sixth episode of Implementing Exceptions with Ruby. My name is Hernan Wilkinson, I work at Tempines, and remember that we are implementing a new model of exceptions for in the Ruby language. On the last episode, we left the last test, test number four, failing because we want to have nested uh, handlers, exception handlers, but we are not supporting that right now. Let's debug to see why is that. And when we send the message called handling, we create the return continuation and then we create an exception handler instance of the class exception handler that keeps all the information we need for the exception handler and also sets the current exception handler to self and current exception handler is a class instance variable on the class exception handler and that's the reason why when we send again the call handling message we are losing the previous handler because we only keep one exception handler at a time so to solve this problem we need to have a list of exception handlers that will be installing every time the call handling message is sent so uh, um, how can we implement that well we could do that inside the initialize method in the exception handler but I think it's better to rename to to send another message to exception handler to take care of that instead of creating the exception handler here what we're going to do is we're going to send the message install uh, exception install handler for or install new handler yeah that's a better name install new handler for and we send all these parameters with the message and now we have to implement this method on the exception handler class so let's do that is a class on uh, sorry a method on the class side and it's going to receive an exception class handler and the return continuation so what are we going to do here well we're going to set the current exception handler to be uh, a new instance of, of itself that we're going to send the exception class the handler and the return continuation and let's see if everything is working but the test number four no we have a, a problem and the problem is that the current exception handler is we don't have to send that to the class we have to send it to self okay test four is failing uh, let's do a refactoring here let's remove let's do a re inline of this method yes uh, I don't know why it's not doing it correctly remind so let's run the test again all the tests are running but the test four I you know the changes I did uh, I, I should have common test four before doing these changes but anyway sometimes you you don't follow all the rules like I did just uh, like I just did so um, okay now we have install new handler 4 that is creating a new instance of exception handler and setting that to current exception handler but also we need to create that list of exception handler so we're going to send here on uh, to, uh, with the new message the current exception handler so we can create that list of handlers so now the initialize is going to get a last handler <coughs> and we want, we want to keep that in a instance variable let's call it previous last handler or let's call it previous handler just previous okay and let's see if everything is working fine but test number four yes that's fine and now that we have the list of handlers we can change our handle method to be sure that uh, 
to handle the situation where the current handler is not for the class of the exception that is being thrown. So if the type of the exception is, is not uh, exception to handle class, what we need to do is we need to send to previews the message handle with an exception. Of course we have a problem here because uh, we will get some somewhere as uh, I mean we should evaluate the handler not found handler not found uh, sometime but let's re re uh, comment that for a moment see what happened and now we are getting some weird errors the first one is an ex unexpected return and we get that from here in the call handling method what is an unexpected return? that's a return that is evaluated from a method that already returned so this method call handling when it was evaluated return normally sent from the call and then from some reason we are trying to return using the continuation and the problem with that is I mean it's happening because we are not uninstalling the handlers after we use them so what we need to do after the call is to send a message uninstall to exception handler that will uninstall the current handler so let's define uninstall that will set current exception handler to be the uh, current exception handler previous so now we need to define previous as an instance method and that's going to return the variable previous the instance variable previous let's see now okay hmm, now we we got another weird uh, situation we have another weird situation because now test number one is not uh, is not running correctly is failing because we are getting nil instead of two that is because the implementation that we use here is not correct we are instead of returning the result of the call we are returning the result of the uninstall and you can see how TDD helps us to solve issues that sometimes we don't see so what we need to do here let's put it here in a result and return result to see if test number one runs again and yes it's running but test number three still having that error an unexpected return why is that well again the problem is that we are returning from the method and then we are trying to return again from that method using a continuation but we are uninstalling the handler so why is this happening well the problem is that when the return continuation is evaluated and we return from the call handling method we are not really uninstalling the handler the handler is uninstalled only if the call message returns without any problem but if the return continuation is evaluated and we return from it then the uninstall message is not sent so we have to change our call in such a way that the uninstall message is always sent no matter if we return correctly from the call or from the continuation and to do that we're going to use an ensure so let's do a begin and send an unsure that assure us that the code that is between the ensure and the end is always executed no matter how the method the the code that is between the begin and the, and the ensure ends so if the return continuation is evaluated and we return from the call handling method it will also send the message uninstalled to the exception handler so now let's run the test we have now another problem it's not the an unexpected return but that the problem is that we are sending the message handle to nil in the in the handle method and we knew that that was going to happen because we know that we are get, we are creating a list 
of handlers, but we are not taking care of the case when we get to the end of the list, and that's when previous is nil. So let's put an if, if previous uh, nil, then what we have to do in that case is to evaluate this code, that is send the message handler not found to uh, to the current exception, and if not, then we send the message handle to the previous exception handler. Okay. Cool. Let's run the test, and all tests are running. So that is great. Now we have our continuations, uh, sorry, our handlers that are nested and everything is working fine. Let's debug a little bit to see how that happens. So the first time we send the message call handling, we create the continuation, the return continuation, we install the new handler and to do that we create an, a new instance of exception handler giving it the previous exception handler. So we keep the previous exception handler and set the current handler to be the new one and when we send the message call handling again now we have current exception handler to be the, uh, the current exception handler but after creating the new one current exception handler will be referencing will be referencing to the new instance of exception handler and the previous uh, of a variable will be uh, referencing the current exception handler. So in that way we create a list of handlers and every time we send the message called handling a new a new one is uh, created in that list and here when we throw the exception we look f for the uh, we tell the current exception handler that is really the last exception handler we should rename this variable to handle the exception, we check if the exception is of the type that we want to handle, we did handler, in this case it is not, we check if we got to the end of the list, in this case we didn't get to the end of the list, so we tell the previous handler to handle the exception, and we verify again if it is for the current, uh, for the type of the exception that we are uh, expecting, in this case an exception if of, of type new exception, an exception to handle is a handle exception, so it's not for this. And we're checking here if previous is nil, and that is true, because this is the last exception handler. So we tell the exception handler not found, in this case uh, handler not found signals a new exception, in this case and handle exception, that we look again for, for the uh, uh, an, a handler to handle that new type of exception. In this case, it won't do it. It will tell the previous handler to handle the exception. And here we will see that an exception is of type of, if is of type and handle exception. And that's the type of exceptions that we want this handler to handle. So it will call the handler that returns number two, that get uh, that sends the call to the return continuation, that uninstall the handler, and everything works fine. Okay, so there is a refactoring we that we got in mind that is renaming this variable to be last handler instead of current exception handler. Last handler. Let's rename it. Let's run all the tests and they run. So what have we do? What have we done in this uh, episode? Well, from the design point of view, we created this list of handlers, and as we saw at the beginning, the last handler is referencing nil. When we send the first call handling message, we create a handler that will have nil as previous, and in this case, the exception class to handle will be an exception and handle exception. And then when we send the call handling message again, the last handler 
we'll be referencing as previous the previous exception handler and as an exception class to handle the new exception subclass that's what we're doing here in the test here we are setting the new handler for new exception subclass and that's how the uh, list of handlers get installed when sending the message called handling and now when we let's let's see how the objects collaborate we create the new handler when the first handler when we send the message called handling to the lambda expression and again we create an, a new handler when we send the second time the call handling message and when we send the message throw to a new exception that creates a new instance of new exception that's and sends the message throw to that new instance and the throw method sends the message handle to exception handler to the class which sends the message handle to the last handler and that one checks if the uh, type of the exception that is thrown is the same of the type of the exception that the handler is installed for in this case it returns false so it tells the previous handler hey handle new uh, this exception so the previous handler uh, checks if the type of the exception is the one that he has to handle in this case return false so the previous handler send the message handler not found to the new exception in this case which sends the message throw to unhandle exception and unhandle exception again looks for the handler to handle itself so sends the message handle to the exception handler that sends the message handle to the last handler verify if the uh, that handler is for that type of exception it returns false sends the message handle to the previous the previous verifies is the if he has to handle that uh, that exception in this case he has to do it returns true so calls the uh, the handler of the of the exception handler and returns and etc so you can see it's kind of messy or not not messy but maybe difficult to follow but really it's very simple what we are doing is we are creating exception handlers and we are nesting them in a list and then we just use the uh, some type of object recursion to look for the current handler to handle an exception so what are the conclusions for this episode from the design point of view we have nested handlers using a list of handlers we use the ensure to always uninstall the handlers and we have a bunch of news to do a new of new to do's that we haven't seen let's see then uh, well we keep the design smell from the previous one uh, well now we have to do number two and number three done so let's move it here uh, we have to test the default handler not found strategy that's something that we are keeping from previous episode episodes handler should always be uninstalled when the message uninstall new handler is sent well this is a very interesting design issue because right now we are letting the exception handler to receive the message install new handler for and then we are um, giving the responsibility of the sender of that message to uninstall the handler but that's not a good idea because somebody co could send the message install new handler for and not send the message uninstall and if that happens you know we will get a, a, a return from a method that already returned so we will get an error uh, so we have to find a way for this not to happen we, I think we have to encapsulate all this code inside this method but so that's what the to do number five is about another th issue is that we are using nil to represent the end of the list and that's why we have to have this if here and this is kind of messy it makes the code of the handle method not easy to read and also I have a 
design rule that says that we should always avoid using nil, the object nil, because nil is an object that is not polymorphic with any other object. So every time a variable can reference nil, we have to put an if before using that variable. And you know, that's error prone. We always forget to check that, and that's why we get, in, depending on the language, uh, an exception saying that we are referencing nil or null or a method missing in this case in Ruby um, that at the end will throw an exception. So we will have we will, we have to get rid of this nil and also we have to make the handle method nicer. Right now it's very difficult to understand and we have to name the test correctly. So I think uh, those are the things that we're going to address on the next episode. So I hope to see you on episode number 7.